In a recent video, I took a look at some of these little panel indicators that actually have a digital readout and they show the actual supply voltage. I was really impressed because the circuitry is just, it seems so minimalist for what it does and it seemed relatively accurate. So I, I decided to reverse engineer it, partly because I wanted to try and work out what this chip was, if it was a standard chip. Excuse the slightly blurry picture, I didn't realise uh, that it wasn't quite sharply in focus and I took it, but that's okay, you can still get the gist of what's on it. So there's a diode on this side and the chip, and that diode and this one on the other side, uh, and this zener and the off-board electrolytic capacitor here, form the power supply. Now, when I was looking at the uh, original uh, unit, I mentioned that I wasn't over keen the fact that they used a single resistor for the sense resistor because uh, if this thing is rated up to 600 volts, I really don't think it is rated to 600 volts, then the sense resistor I thought was a wee bit underrated for that. But I've changed my mind now because it comes onto this pad here and then goes through an identical value sense resistor. So there's two in series. Then it goes through a diode and then the other part of the diode bridge, which is this 7.5K resistor and then a capacitor to smooth that out. I'm just going to show you this um, on the schematic itself. So here we have the supply coming in. And if you look at the power supply first, it's this capacitive dropper, which basically portions a small amount of current on each sine wave. <laughs> And ideally, you'd just have that capacitor and a diode like that charging this capacitor here. But you can't do that. The capacitor needs to see both polarities of the sine wave to actually operate because it needs to be charged and discharged. So they've got another diode here, which, if you consider it, that's actually the, the basic outline of a voltage multiplier. And uh, it would, if, if, that was a, if this had, was a high impedance circuit and that was a super high volt, suitably high voltage capacitor, that would act as a voltage multiplier. But in this case, it just means that on every sine wave, a portion of current goes into this capacitor and charges it up to supply power to the microcontroller. There is a 5 volt zener. However, the only time I can see that actually come into operation is at the beginning as the chip boots up. Because initially when you power it up, the display doesn't light, so it will need something to cap the voltage. But once the display is lit, then the display itself kind of actually attenuates the voltage. Uh, because there are no resistors to the LEDs. So I found that in use, the voltage across the electrolytic of, well, uh, I thought, which one was it? I think it was the yellow one I was testing. The voltage across the electrolytic uh, dropped about 2.5 volts, which does equate to the use of the Gary Marsonide type yellow LEDs in that instance. And it's quite odd that there must be some trickery going on because if the uh, analog to digital converter, which uh, the sense inputs feeding, is referenced, it's got two options for the reference. It doesn't have an internal voltage reference. It's either to the supply rail or it's to uh, external reference input, which is not being used here. That, the reference input pin is actually going out to the LED display. It's being used as an IO pin. So um, I'm guessing that they just balance it. They might have a calibration value for the type of LED display that's being used and the typical forward voltage of that. I'm not sure. It's quite clever how they get such accuracy. That could also mean that in, if the wrong software was used with a different calibration value, for something like, say, the gallium nitride LEDs, like the high brightness green, white or blue, it's possible that because they're more prone as the current increases to a slight voltage variation versus the traditional red and yellow LEDs, it could actually skew the, the actual accuracy a little bit. But that's the power supply. The sense circuit uh, is basically, here's the first resistor. That's the external one. Here's a second resistor, there's the diode, and there's the bridge, uh, other part of the resistive bridge to divide the current down, the voltage down. And then there's a smoothing capacitor. There's, I'm not sure what the value of the capacitor is. I'm going to guess that's 100 nanofarads. Just all it has to do is basically smooth that uh, voltage reference to let the microcontroller see roughly what the external voltage is. Now, I did test. I, I worked out... Uh, uh, I might be wrong, but I worked out that this will uh, typically give 0.864% of the uh, reference voltage based on the two 430k resistors in series giving one value, one resistor, and the 7.5k giving the other. And that works out that at 240 volts, it will put in roughly about 2 volts to the microcontroller. This does hint that, you know, it can't read up 
much higher above that before getting too close to the supply rail at 2.5 volts. Although having said that, as the external supply voltage increases, it's possible that uh, the resistors, well, the resistance, the natural resistance of the uh, I.O. pins feeding the LED display might result in an increased supply rail voltage, which then would skew the results and they'd have to compensate for that. There may be compensation in the software, I'm not sure. It's either a lucky bit of software or it does have quite sophisticated compensation uh, in it. When I measured it, I found that when it was powered up from a Variac, it does not start reading at 60 volts. The voltage, as I turned it up, initially nothing happened, then the display started blinking. Not displaying the voltage, but just displaying a set of zeros. It was basically a chip powering up. And as soon as it powered up and lit the displays, because the uh, mains voltage through the Variac was too low to actually pass enough current in each full main cycle through this capacitor. It was charging this capacitor up to the point the processor could boot. It was lighting the displays. They were draining the capacitor down below the threshold at which the microcontroller would uh, reset. And it was resetting. So it kept doing that. And as you turned the voltage up, uh, it got faster and faster and faster until it locked on. And it locked on at about 110 volts. So I would say that these un these modules are really just 110 to 40 volts. I wouldn't really consider using them lower than that and higher than that. The I connected the fluke and I got the meter and I connected them to the Variac. And when it had finally booted up at 110 volts, it was displaying 109 volts in the fluke. 120 volts was 118 volts in the fluke. Uh, should I say 120 volts in the fluke was displaying uh, the 118 on the meter. 150 volts on the fluke was displaying 150 volts. And, you know, it was really accurate. It was really surprisingly accurate for such simple circuitry. Um, so these are, are neat. I, I reckon the microcontroller is a PIC16F676 because the pinout matches. Uh, in terms of the power pins... The fact they've not used uh, the Master Clear and the VPP pin, it's the only pin that's not used at all. And that makes sense because that is a special application pin. It is limited probably in the way it can be pulled high or low. And also it won't have protection on it because uh, it's designed to accommodate this sort of programming voltage which is a lot higher than the normal voltage. So that pin is often just used as a sort of general reset pin or just left. Well, I don't know if it's tied to something or not connected. I'm guessing it might just not be connected, and if there is a pull-up, that might be applied. Um, or pulled down, possibly. The input from the analog, the uh, sense circuit, came in at pin 9, which is analog input 5. And the rest of the pins are purely driving the LED display. Three of them used for the uh, digit drive and the other seven used for the segment drive. Really, really super simple. Um, so yeah, it's quite neat. The circuitry is just breathtakingly simple. It really is a clever bit of software. And uh, if you look up that number, the PIC16F676, and digital meter, you'll find there's quite a few circuits online for uh, implementing it as a meter, but most of them use uh, transistors on, and resistors uh, to actually drive the LED display properly. But in this case, because it's, the displays are so efficient um, and they wanted to keep the component out count to a minimum, they have just driven them directly from the pins, which is kind of naughty. But having said that, the supply is limited and that's what they're relying on to uh, regulate the sort of current through the LEDs. So uh, one other thing, a few of you were asking in another recent video about the water hydrogenator. This thing that uh, when you uh, put water in it and you click the button and it flashes and then all the little bubbles foam up and uh, it puts hydrogen into the water. Well, hydrogen and oxygen. Some of you were asking, why didn't I light the hydrogen? because it was non-characteristic of me not to do that. And the answer is because it produces very little. I tried lighting it and nothing happened. So I decided then to stick a condom over the top of the bottle to actually inflate the condom with hydrogen. And it took a full charge plus of this cell to actually fill a standard condom as a sort of like pressure vessel, a gas holder. So uh, this is what happened when I tested that.
This video has absolutely no dignity. Yes, that is a condom on top of the hydrogenator, the water hydrogenator. A few of you were saying, why didn't I light it? And the answer is because it produces so little that it took literally a full battery capacity to actually produce this amount. But then I've produced it, so let's, let's light it. Oh, oh. Not having much... Well, that was a surprisingly good result. 